evening. Welcome to the celebration. Welcome to the worship. We've come together to give thanks and praise to God. We have come together to worship God, our Creator, the giver of every gift, the source of every blessing. As we lift up our voices in song and hear the good news, we respond to God's love with joy and grace. Welcome to the celebration. You may be seated. Our psalm is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. May those who sow tears reap in the shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheets. Let us make our confession. We confess that we have not loved our God or our neighbor as ourselves. We have not given thanks with our hearts, our minds, and our voices. We have failed to recognize the great things that God has done through countless gifts of love. We've come to give thanks, but first we need to confess our sin. Our failures are very real. Our feelings of discouragement continue to haunt us. Lord God of all of us, forgive our sin. See through our failures and disappointments to the hearts of the people who desire only to serve you in a troubled world. God hears our prayer for forgiveness and has forgiven our sin in the person of Jesus Christ. Where we have failed, God has triumphed. Where we fall short, God has won the prize. Our sin is forgiven and this is the good news that we are no longer slaves to our former selves, but have been freed up to be the real people of God. We can worship our God with a new sense of what thanksgiving really means. Praise God for a wonderful love. The first reading is from Joel 2, verses 21 through 27. The prophet Joel understood that a locust plague that ravaged the land of Judah was God's judgment on the people, whom he then called to repentance. Today's reading points beyond the judgment to a time when God will bless the land and cause it to produce food in abundance. The reading begins. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. The word of our Lord.
The second reading is from 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 7. Christians are encouraged to offer prayers and thanks for all people, including rulers. We offer such inclusive, far-reaching prayers because God desires to save all people. The reading begins. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this, I was appointed a herald and, and an apostle. I'm, I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of our Lord. The gospel for this Thanksgiving Eve service is written in Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning with the 25th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught his disciples about the providence of God so that they would regard life with thanksgiving and trust rather than anxiety. The reading begins. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
and all these things will be given you as well. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Let's pray. God, as we gather tonight, we give thanks for yet another year, a year of changes and challenges, and yet a year with your presence. And we give thanks for what we have, and we pray that you would bless our fellowship, our gathering tonight, and the times tomorrow with friends, family, and we pray that you would bless us with your presence in, in so many and varied ways over this, this time. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. So we gather here tonight to give thanks. In the midst of the broken world in which we live, in the midst of the chaos of sin, in the midst of the uncertainty of life, we come together to give thanks. Now, I love to read the Psalms. The Psalms are known as the prayer book of the Bible. The Psalms bring before God the concerns, the fears, the sins, as well as the joys and the gratitude of everyday people like you and me. They express what we feel. They remind us of our need for God and of a Savior who raises us up. Psalm 130 begins, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. When I think about the unrest and the tragedy that's present as a maniac killer now killing six people and injuring more than 40 attending a Christmas parade, I wonder about the depravity that is present in human beings. The psalm brings out the feelings of despair, the terror that we're left with as we struggle to come to grips with this kind of evil. And when I think of the relief and the exaltation that I felt as the COVID vaccines were approved for use and the bounty of the harvest that came in this fall in the midst of, of the drought in much of our Midwest, I look at Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. And then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. When we look at the blessings of life, the family time, the, the meaningful work, the friendships, the comfort of our own homes, we can give thanks for the beauty of creation and the opportunity to live and work and renew our spirits in this place that we call home, we give thanks. Psalm 122 expresses feelings of joy and thanksgiving for the house of the Lord and how fortunate we are to have this beautiful place to gather, to give thanks, and to share our fellowship in Christ. It says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We're blessed to live in a land where we can freely worship and praise God and give thanks for Jesus who has saved us from our sins. We can understand the privilege and the need to gather to worship and to give thanks after having been shut down for such a long while. Our God cares so much about us that he goes to any length to get 
to know us and to be with us. Psalm 139 beautifully proclaims God's presence and God's love for us. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. There's no place we can go where our loving, nurturing, saving God is not there with us. This Thanksgiving, this holiday that we have, is a gift. We are given time to gather with family, friends, our church, and basically the nation as a whole to stop what we're doing and to remember God who has given us all these blessings that we enjoy and many that we take for granted. We take a break from the busy routine and lives that we're leading, the everyday routines that we follow faithfully, and we rest. We have a meal together. most important to us, to relax and to rest. But above all, we have the opportunity to give thanks. We can take the time to think about what God has done for us and for all people. We can think about how God has blessed us and how God loves us unconditionally. And we remember the depth of the love that God has as he gave Jesus to redeem us, to show us how to live and love from God himself. Jesus teaches us so much about what the heart of God is like in our gospel. We are urged to place our trust in God, God who blesses us with all we have in our lives. Jesus goes after our penchant for worrying, reminding us that God takes care of all of that. He takes care of everything from the grass to the birds to the food we eat, the clothes we need, and the shelter that we have. A God who cares for creation this much certainly cares for humans who are the crown of his creation. We naturally worry because we struggle with our faith. We want to do it ourselves, and we think we're in control. But we are so beautifully reminded here that it's our loving God who provides for us. We simply have to trust that God will provide. How those blessings come to us varies by our need. But whether we work hard for what comes or whether it just seems to fall into our laps, all that we have is a gift from this gracious God. Tomorrow, as you're gathering, maybe just the two of you or with a huge group of family and friends, Remember to give thanks to God and enjoy your special day. Psalm 134 is a good way to close out this message. I'd ask you to rise. As, as we relate this psalm, I, I read this special psalm as a blessing from God. Come. 
Bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in this holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, bless you from Zion. Amen. You may be seated.
us unite in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the eyes of your heart be open to the blessings that surround you. May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in your spirit. May thankfulness rise up within you, not just during this short season, but day after day. From the early morning watch until you retire for the night, may your prayers reflect gratitude while acknowledging the needs of others whose situations are so drastically different. May thoughts of Jesus fill your mind and thanksgiving be your response. Amen.
now we get to retire into the fellowship hall for pie. And everybody has to go in because there's lots of it there. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.